Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Friends, we're watching Lower Decks from Star Trek Season 4, Episode 3, In the Cradle of Vexalon. And you know what? This one sounds like a title that you would hear back from the original series. You know, Dagger of the Mind, In the Cradle of Vexalon. You know, that seems like it goes hand in hand with the way they used to name things back in the original series. So I, I personally like it just, you know, to hear these kind of, you know, In the Cradle of, we understand. Vexalon, what's that? That's usually the, what the uh, original series would do. So I love, love, love that. So I can't wait to see what we're doing because, again, <sighs> Every second, I am going to treasure with this incredible crew and this incredible creative team that makes up Lower Decks. So friends, let's get into it. But first, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ringy ding ding that bell for notifications, and you'll be alerted next time we go live on YouTube with any Lower Decks or the original series or any of our uh, science fiction offerings. And of course, if you'd like any of those early or in their full length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description, my friends. But all that is then, and this is now. Now, and now it's time for some he's, now it's time for some haws, as we watch Star Trek Lower Deck Season 4, Episode 3, In the Cradle of Vexalon. Friends, prepare to engage maximum warp reaction, and away we go. <laughs> Oh, no cold open. Going right into the credits. It's always off-putting for me. I don't know what to think. Should I be worried? With a roving killer spacecraft out there, I think we should all be worried, but we'll see. If any crew can handle it, it's the crew of the Cerritos. That little ship, though, gets her ass handed to her just about every season. That is a hell of a battle now going on. Packlids and the thing from Voyage Home and Borg and Romulans. Oh my. Ah, the Cerritos. Is there any significance to its designation? Was it 75567? I've been meaning to ask that for like, I don't know, two or three seasons. Federation World Corazonia, an artificial megastructure in a bespoke star system designed by a long extinct alien species. Oh, wow perfect climate and surface conditions thanks to Vexalon, the environmental computer installed by the ring's original designers. Well, we always know that computers are always nice. Thank you for making the trip on short notice, Captain. It's like Halo, right? The weather has become unpredictable. One minute it's blue skies, the next it's blizzards. Hmm. We're all artists and poets, but I've been so stressed. Just look at the terrible statues I made last week. Yeesh. Yeah, that's a pretty clumsy expression of form. Those are our finest works. We're talking about those over there. Oh, those suck. Just an amateur lack of focus and balance. Ransom! <laughs> Jack, an art snob. Who would have guessed? I'm going I'm to write that down. Jack, art snob. It's just embarrassing. I've been fine for millennia, but now I can't even control my monsoon seasons. I don't know. I just pop your control panel and take a look at your circuit. Oh, there we go. I'm sure we can have you up and running in no time. Carol, maybe Billups? I minored in archaic technology back at the academy. I think I've got this. Carol, you know, pride before the fall and all that stuff. Whew, this is it. Your first away mission as a commander. No big deal. You've got this. You are boss, Boimler. And Who do you got? Yes, Talyn? Your team is waiting. Have you completed your confidence boosting ritual? <laughs> Talyn! Boimler to Talyn. Yeah, yeah. All equipment is in adequate condition to accomplish our errand. Errand. First mission as commander. It's pretty cool, right? Perhaps we should proceed. <clears throat> oh my god, Talyn is great. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to come to me or provisional lieutenant junior grade Talyn, who's on site in case any science stuff happens. Everything that has ever occurred is science stuff. <laughs> oh my god, she's the best. Your caution is warranted. Statistically, ensigns serving under recently promoted commanders are more likely to experience death and or dismemberment. Death? Yes, and nice. or dismemberment. And, and or. The component pieces are unstable and could detonate at any moment. Woo! The retrofit must be conducted in precise order or the terminal will explode. Well, good thing to Lynn's here then. It's like disarming a building-sized bomb? The similarity is not inaccurate. <laughs> is not inaccurate. She is the best. I wonder how Boimler's doing down there on his mission. <laughs> Anything that requires further study or might need to be returned to its previous entity is kept right- Ugh, it's a room full of Easter eggs. Greetings ah. and salutations! Uh-oh. The Betazoid gift box, things creep me out. Oh. This is a 
message for Rutherford. I don't want to be in this room. I want to live in your quarters. Oh, is this guy sentient? No, they, they just tend to pick up phrases they overhear. Eat a bag of board, d motherfucker. I didn't know that Dr. Tahana Ooh. came in here. Oh, no way! It's the Wadi Chula game, the one that traps you inside until you solve its annoying challenges. Oh, hell yeah, the one with like the pastel triangles and the little girl doing hopscotch and everybody's like, <laughs> I told you it didn't feel too different from being an ensign. At least this will be something interesting. No more mindless, repetitive tasks for- Isolinear chip junction seams. I need you three to scan each and every one of these isolinear chips by hand. What? Why? It's an hour, the room fills with nitrogen coolant, so keep your breathers handy. The chips can get scalding hot, so watch out for that. Oh, Phillips Ferret got out this morning. Oh, we saw it. On Orion, older pirates would haze new recruits by making them do worthless tasks, like clean the door panels with their tongues. Wow. Hazing? It's a prank dressed up as team building that nobody really likes. Well, that doesn't sound very Starfleet. Yeah, I gotta agree with Ruthie on this one. Ruthie? This is just an annoying job given to us by an annoying guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably overreacting. Tendy's gonna get pissed. And I love it. Hang tight. I'll get you caught up with this update and it should clear things right up. Thank you, Captain. You saved us. And this is where he becomes sentient and becomes evil. Captain, did that update require a shutdown? And it wasn't supposed to. Oh, there's her clouds falling and killing people. Good news, it's only poets, though. That's awful. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Okay. Stop, stop, stop. You know what? Why, why don't I show you how? No. So you have four subspawners in the corners that interface with the ion generator in the center, which self-stabilizes the Brad, reaction. If broken in the wrong... You've got to be able to trust people to do stuff with orders. Got it? I don't think we did. Maybe we could try it? Okay, not a big deal. Let me just pop another quick demo for you. Come on, Brad, come on. That's part of command is you have to trust that <gasps> the orders you give... Oh my God, there's... Wow, you all look beat. I oh, didn't know scanning could be so taxing. Ah, uh, uh, sir, look, we've scanned every chip. Oh, it set you up. Even the second layer? Why didn't you tell us about all these? I don't know, the hidden button seemed obvious. Why did... The hidden button seemed obvious? Oh, this is definitely hazing. Yeah, Tendy's gonna get pissed. Hey, how'd you deal with this kind of thing back on Orion? Blindfolded saber fight. Okay, I want to hear more about that, but I... <laughs> I want to hear more about that. Uh, some shit's going on here in Vexalon. Now, I think the ancient manual is saying to press... Carol. <gasps> we love Vexalon. No, it's a nice one. We're fine. It, well, it was a nice one. There. <laughs> That got rid of the stalled update. Maybe talk to Billups. Captain, are you sure this is safe mode and not a full reboot? Uh... For God's... S Distributing miasma, stirring primordial ooze. It's recreating the world, everybody. We're gonna have a lot of dead poets in this society. I'll see myself out. Shouldn't we help? It's getting really crazy out there. Just keep doing what you're doing! Oh, Brad. I only have one left, and we all get out of here alive. <laughs> Freeman to Lieutenant Boimler. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Captain. Captain. Vexalon can force a restart if we reroute its primary power to your station. But the station's outdated. Oh, boy. Fascinating. A mountain, or possibly a volcano, has appeared. Oh, it is a volcano. <laughs> to Lynn, it is a volcano. I love her. I need her at all times in every episode. Just to stand there and look disapproving. <laughs> That's why we trap him in the Wadi game and let him marinate in there for a bit while the Betazoid gift box screams at him. Ooh. <laughs> <gasps> oh, hey. Done already? <laughs> yeah, dick licker we are. <laughs> oh, thank God. I can't tell you how glad I am to hear that. Why? Those isolinear chips run some of the most important systems on the ship. How familiar are you with the Wadi Chula game? We put one in. Uh, I mean, uh, the what now? It's a game that traps a user in a little dimension until they can complete its challenges yes i got trapped in one for a month i was too dumb to work my way out i should have helped you today but all those glowing chips remind me too much of the, the game <laughs> is this true or bullshit cheer you up to talk about that music that you like so much all the right slop jazz yes oh yes that's it okay you've rambled about that at length before go fix it right go fix it <laughs> For God's sakes, Brad. Stay away from the blast zone. Just five or six more trips. You can't keep everybody alive. 
This is quite enough, Lieutenant. You will allow the Ensigns to assist you. It is admirable that you care for the safety of your team, but danger is an accepted risk of Starfleet duty. No, I know. Yep, it's part of the job. Your promotion was not random. I studied your records and mission logs before our departure. Oh. Your work is exemplary. Look at your team. They deserve your trust, just as Commander Ransom trusted you. Talyn. The files really said I'm great? They thoroughly describe your strengths and shortcomings. <laughs> we worked together for years. I trust you. Big Murph, you're with me. We're unloading the transport. Taylor and Meredith, plan the terminal and get those power cylinders reattached. Nobody's exploding today. There you go. Thank you, Talyn. Oh. Oh my God, Tendi. Oh man, am I in the game? Move along home. Oh no. Go Tendi, go Tendi, go Tendi. Got your ass. Got your ass. Well, I should probably get back to my room. Miglimo's coming over to help me sort through my trust issues. Oh uh, wait. Oh, trust issues. That's a oh crap. I forgot. I'm meeting Miglimo in his office. Ha! Huh. I had no reason to come back here for hours. You did it. You did it, Rutherford. Those cylinders. Complete. Complete. Securing my final clan. Taylor. Come on, everybody. Rotational stand. Ah. Ah. Oh, careful, careful. You're gonna lose somebody at some point, Brad. Captain, power's up. Keep the engine running while I hack this megastructure. What happened? Oh no, did I shut down? Oh, I'm a terrible host. Vexalon, focus. Yeah, Vexalon, come on. We've got a problem. We're almost done. I need more time. Everyone out of here. No, we can help. Ensign, the lieutenant gave you an order. Brad. Brad. Lieutenant Boimler, shut it down. On it, Captain. The Lieutenant Junior Grade First Mission Mortality Rate appears to be accurate. <gasps> what? The co- Oh my god, you died! Your mission was a success. Well done, Mr. Boimler. You never forget your first death. Only more and more dangerous missions from here on out. <laughs> oh, Brad. Dear god. I wish you could find it without sending me all these jazz albums. I like them and it's bugging me. I am not a jazz person. Next time, we assume the best in people. Here, here. They bought the Wadi game story, huh? Oh, yeah. Told him I was stuck in there for a month. <laughs> hey, little guy. Go get Rutherford. You sons of bitches. Livick, Dirk. All right, my friends, we just got done watching Star Trek Lower Deck Season 4, Episode 3 in the Cradle of Vexalon. And the only thing left to do is talk about it. All right, my friends, we just got done watching Star Trek Lower Deck Season 4, Episode 3 in the Cradle of Vexalon. Another really cool, again, now this is a mission mission. We got a mission mission one as uh, our prior one, I Have I have No Bones Yet I Must Flee, was a kind of a, a social one to see exactly how our characters were doing socially with the promotion aspects of everything. Now we got to see the actual application of what their promotions mean to everything. You know, there was... Uh, Nothing's changed with the one group of Rutherford, Beckett, and Tendy, where they're still doing what they considered to be ensign and cadet work. And they were absolutely right in that Dirk and apparently Jack were behind a little bit of hazing for them by making them scan all these isolinear chips and making them think that one of them could destroy the ship or some shit. Um, you know, uh, that's one way. And that was, you know, the promotion being kind of, you know, uh, not given all the accolades that you would think that you would get, you know, by this promotion. But then the other side of it was we got to see what Beck or Beckett, we got to see what Brad had to do with his side of the promotion, which was actually commanding people. Now, I wanted to say this. I think Brad, uh, Talyn is a fantastic addition to the cast. She is absolutely a voice of reason, um, a voice of logic, which this group sorely needs, um, and a group of matter-of-factness that, you know, what well, you can say that's logic and whatnot, but she's blunt. And her blunt delivery is something that this group needs. You have bluntness with Mariner, but it's usually kind of wrapped in jest and you're 
you know, she's not always thinking about what's best for the current situation and what's the most fun and things like that, you know, depending upon what Beckett we're talking about. Um, but, you know, with this with Talyn, Talyn's going to be blunt and let you know exactly what she thinks. And a lot of times, because it's based in logic, it's going to be right when it pertains to something like how does command supposed to work? You know, how is command supposed to work? And so that was lovely in that she was able to say, hey, you know, you've got to trust these people or we're all going to die. And that's part of the command, especially in Star Trek. You know, you have to be able to trust those beneath you to follow your orders because that's their leg of the ladder. You know, they have to hold up every, their end of the bargain to be able to make this whole show go. Here's what I was thinking as I was watching this one. And I, I, I drifted a little bit into this thought, which kind of made me quiet towards the middle episode, part of the episode. And I was thinking about this. You know, we had this kind of scenario with Brad where Brad was, didn't want his people to, you know, obviously he didn't want them to die under his watch. So he did everything. Anything that was dangerous, he was going to do. And then, you know, like we just mentioned, Talyn pointed that out to him and he did flip, but again, sent everybody out. But, you know, Talyn agreed with him at that point that, yeah, move everybody outside of this bay and make sure that they can do what needs to be done and, you know, let Brad handle it. Brad was brought back to life again, you know, having been caught in this explosion, which was is troubling, a troubling trend for Brad. Now, what I was thinking of was this, and again, not ever, not all roads lead to Beckett for me, in case anybody's thinking. I like to, I, season one, it was all about Beckett, but since, for me, but since season one, I have definitely kind of equalized the lower deckers of our core four. And I am as interested and invested in what Brad, Tendy, and Rutherford do as I am, or where their story's going, as I am with Beckett's. However, this reminds me of that season one kind of conundrum that I had with Beckett, where I was like, you know, what's going on with you? You know, why are you so afraid of authority or hate authority and are um, dislike promotion, like authority in yourself and authority with others? You know, you, you just don't like it. Blanket statement, I hate authority. This little scenario that we saw with Brad mirrors what I believe happened, something similar happened with Beckett. I think that Beckett was bumped up to like Lieutenant Junior grade or higher. She had a scenario very similar to Brad where she was put in charge of a group of three or four people. They went on an away mission or a repair mission or something. And while she was in command, someone died. That's been my theory for the longest time because we had this kind of that, we had the one flashback where her friend was killed at the bar by the, the shapeshifter that turned into something. And um, that seemed to be, a, um, obviously, a moment of trauma for Beckett as well. And again, like I said, I don't want everything to be, you know, how does this, uh, is this some type of, uh, you know, allegory for Beckett? Or, you know, it's not. It, this was definitely a Brad problem that Brad handled, that it was a learning experience for Brad. But as audience members, and especially since I've already kind of presupposed this, which is a problem in and of itself, because I think that happened. Therefore, I'm going to read more into what's happening just to kind of prove myself right. And I'm trying not to do that. But I wanted to make mention of this because I've mentioned it before in the reactions that I thought that that's what happened to Beckett. I think that she was in command when somebody lost their life. And that's she kind of swore off of it or she was ordered to do something and she didn't want to do it by higher up, and she went ahead and did it, and her group, someone died. And so she hates who was above her, and she hates herself for being the person in charge. Something like that. And we saw that reflective in Brad, you know, but I don't think that Beckett had a Talyn there to kind of explain things to her in ways that she could understand. You know, Talyn, with her matter-of-factness and her, again, it's blunt, but it's it's correct information that she is providing. You know, we're going to die if you don't let them help you. You know, that's that's the way of things. And so Brad was like, you know, you're right. And then Brad rose to the occasion, blah, blah, blah. We don't have to rehash what was there. But I think that that is reflective of something that happened to Beckett. And I'm very curious going forward if that's something that we can watch. And it's something that, you know... So again, no spoilers were given, but way back in season one, when I was watching a couple of the comments said, listen, you know, you're going to get your answers, but it's not going to be for a while. No one told me what the answers were about Beckett, about Beckett's kind of trauma. They said, you're going to get your answers, but it's going to be for a bit. I don't have my answers yet as to why Beckett is, you know, traumatized by authority. 
I think it's coming. And I think we've seen a lot of kind of foreshadowing to that throughout the series, but especially here recently, whenever, you know, she was questioning herself in the last episode, whenever she and Jack, she was kind of going to Jack, you know, thinking that he was going to get rid of her and all this stuff. And Jack said, no, I'm not doing that. You know, I know what you do. I, I'm, I'm smelling what you're cooking, Beckett, whenever you get promoted and you do everything in your power to get demoted again. That's not happening anymore. Not on my watch, because I know what you're capable of. That was foreshadowing as to we need to know what's going on. This was foreshadowing too. But instead of using it as Beckett, you know, kind of going through a similar circumstance, it was Brad going through the same thing and having a different result and where it was him that got hurt. But at the same time, you know, there, there was, I'm just very curious. I'm very curious if that's what they intended with this episode, with that particular, you know, plot point in this episode was to kind of get us ready. This is how Brad dealt with it with Talyn's help. How did Beckett deal with it? And I'm going to assume without any type of help from a character like Talyn or, you know, anybody that was able to kind of help her come to grips with what happened. We know that she doesn't do therapy unless it's going into the holodeck, um, even though I think they've mentioned that she has been seeing Miggly Moo a bit. But again, it's not the Beckett show anymore. Hasn't been since season one for me. You know, it's it's the Tendy, Rutherford, Bradward, and Beckett show. And, you know, uh, hopefully Talyn show, too, because, boy, is that character great. I'm hoping we see a ton of her in the rest of season four and in season five, too, because, ooh, she adds a tremendous... She's different than all of our other characters, different than every single one of the other Lower Deckers. And that is exactly what we needed. I'm curious, though. No mention of the 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 ship that was destroying people. They gave us a break from that, from the seasonal story. So, you know, it's interpersonal with a couple of the things with, you know, the, the, the downfalls of rank is basically what the theme was for this one. You know, what does rank really mean? We had what was growing up really mean uh, last time, growing up transitions, things like that. This one was like, what does, what does becoming a leader or becoming higher rank really mean? And we saw two examples. And so I'm wondering if, you know, what a great way to tell a story. These creative, I mean, when you've got time to cook, the true chefs rise to the occasion. And we've got some gourmet motherfuckers working over at Paramount on Lower Decks. They are truly showing us what it is to create a masterpiece. And they are telling a tale here that is crosses numerous lines of like narrative, you know, it, they're using multiple devices to tell story, the story, the story here. And they are doing it so far in an absolutely flawless, flawless execution with the possible exception of a mathematically perfect redemption. <laughs> I'm allowed to give shit for that one, okay? I didn't like it. But again, if you liked it, I certainly am never going to say, oh, it sucked and you shouldn't like it either. Absolutely not. If you liked a mathematically perfect redemption, then I like that you liked it. How's that sound, you know? And I, I appreciate you for liking it, especially I had people stand up for that episode. And you know what? I appreciate the shit out of that because that means, you know what? It's like, hey, dickhead, I like that. <laughs> like, absolutely. I And again, Never going to yuck anybody's yum. I've said it before. And I'll say it again. But again, I'm ranking them for me. That's my lowest. <laughs> but my friends, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ringy ding ding that bell for notifications, and you too will be alerted next time we go live on YouTube with any Lower Decks, the original series, The Expanse, or any of our sci-fi offerings. And of course, if you'd like anything early or in its full-length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description. But now it's time for us to say goodbye. But where should we say goodbye from? Well, I think it's the only place where we as recently promoted Lieutenant Junior Grades can say goodbye from. Scanning isolinear chips with our tongs and making sure we don't burn ourselves or breathe in some noxious fumes. Because, friends, we're ranking up. And with rank, there are privileges. Sorta. Until next time, my friends, Vulcan roll, and I'll see you.